Number 25, the Geiger counter. In Thunderball, James Bond's famous wristwatch allows him to determine the radiation levels of his surroundings by checking out one of the hands. The Breitling watch was picked up for £25, but is now to be sold by Christie's in London with an estimated price range of £40,000 to £60,000. Number 24, the voice changer. In Diamonds Are Forever, James Bond uses voice changer not just as a spy, but to avoid having to take calls from people he didn't want to talk to. Number 23, X-ray glasses. Although every kid who ever watched Superman wished they had X-ray vision, it wasn't until 1999 in the movie The World Is Not Enough that James Bond finally came out with his super fly X-ray shades. Number 22, the tape recorder camera. Although these days having a multi-purpose gadget isn't really that cool anymore, what with everyone having an iPhone in their pocket, in From Russia With Love, it was one of the coolest things ever. Number 21, the X-ray Polaroid. Before the X-ray wristwatch, there was the X-ray Polaroid camera and License to Kill. It seems that seeing through matter is a critical ability for distinguished British spies. Number 20, the clothing brush communicator. Appropriately concealed as a lint brush, no one would suspect the fact that it basically functioned as Bond's telephone. Number 19, the yo-yo saw. A circular blade attached to a string, James Bond used a yo-yo saw in Octopussy to kill the M16 agent named Vijay. Number 18, radioactive lint. Although never actually used by Bond, in fact it was actually 007 who was tracked with this device, the lint tracker is an ingenious idea. It only activates when placed somewhere on a person's body, like in their pocket, and even if they find it, they'll just throw it away thinking it's nothing more than a piece of lint. Number 17, the dentonite toothpaste. If you see James Bond rolling around with something as unassuming as a toothpaste bottle, you can bet your money it will do something crazy, like explode. Number 16, the money bomb. Bond's enemies like money, and Bond likes blowing up his enemies. Enter the money bomb. Number 15, the glass shattering ring. In his movie Die Another Day, James Bond used a glass shattering ring to break even bulletproof windows. It's basically an ultra high frequency sonic agitator ring around his finger that he activated with a clockwise twist. Number 14, the dagger shoe. The dagger shoes that James Bond used in his movie From Russia With Love were retractable and had poison tip blades in their toe caps. In the movie, it was shown that the tetrodotoxin poison in the toe caps was capable of killing anybody within just a span of 7 seconds. Number 13, the piton gun. Although there have been a good number of James Bond gadgets that had a grappling capabilities, the most popular is probably the piton gun used in Goldeneye. In addition to its ability to fire a grappling hook, it also had a built-in laser cutter. With this, Bond could get over and through nearly any and every obstacle. Number 12, the Ghetto Blaster. While never used by James Bond, we see this gadget being tested in Q Branch for the Americans. The aptly named Ghetto Blaster is basically a boombox that can fire a rocket. Number 11, the Car Phone. One of the few Bond gadgets that actually made its way into the lives of everyday civilians, it would still be about two decades after their initial appearance in a Bond movie before car phones became popular in real life. Number 10, the TV Watch. Able to receive video transmissions wirelessly, this was another gadget that was ahead of its time by about three decades. Number 9, the deadly briefcase. The attaché briefcase that James Bond used in his movie From Russia With Love was his first ever real film gadget. The one that the Q branch gave him had a sniper rifle inside as well as compartments containing a knife and other weapons. No surprise about the name. Number 8, multi-purpose mobile phone. In Tomorrow Never Dies, James Bond used an Ericsson mobile phone that served numerous purposes. It had a fingerprint scanner, a key replicator, as well as controls for the defense system of his car. It's believed that the original phone used in the movie was the design from which the Ericsson R380 was based. Number 7, Cigarette Darts. The cigarette darts that James Bond used in You Only Live Twice were able to accurately shoot a target from as far as 30 yards away, and we thought cigarettes only caused lung cancer. Number 6, the Garrote Watch. The 4007's watches all became multi-purpose killing machines. Red Grant, an early Bond villain, tried to kill Bond with a specially equipped watch that allowed you to whip out a retractable wire. Unfortunately for Red, Bond was better at using his watch than he was. Number 5, the Bowler Hat. The bowler hat that James Bond used in Goldfinger had a razor-sharp steel rim. It was intended to serve as a throwing weapon for Bond whenever opponents were in sight. In fact, in the movie, the hat was so strong that it was capable of slicing stone and metal when thrown. Number 4. The Sleeping Man James Bond used an experimental weapon which he called the Sleeping Man in the movie Moonraker. This weapon was developed by the Q branch and was basically a machine gun turret that was disguised as a sleeping man. Once the device is activated, the man is cut into halves, the body is torn apart, and a turret is revealed from the inside. Number 3, the Rolex watch. Although Bond's watch, Never Say Never Again, featured a laser cutter, it wasn't until Live and Let Die that it got a serious upgrade. 
Able to deflect bullets thanks to a powerful electromagnet, it came with a saw that once helped Bond escape from a shark tank. Number two, the ski pole gun. Bond used a 30 caliber ski pole rifle to shoot people in The Spy Who Loved Me. It had a four shot clip in his handle and had a twistable top which when rotated would reveal the trigger. And number one, the rocket pack. Used by 007 and Thunderball, this jetpack was a low power propulsion device that allowed him to leap or travel small distances safely. In the movie, the rocket pack had its major exposure when James Bond made a hasty escape after an assassination.